but I think we have strong models now uh, around the world that, that demonstrate that point. So if we are to succeed, we have to break through the isolation that exists today and create the enabling conditions to give the poorest of the poor a chance to succeed uh, through their own hard work and initiative. We know that the only way to reach uh, the 2.5 billion people living on less than $2 a day is to create greater opportunity while more deeply connecting them to the economic, social, and political lives of their countries and through their countries to the global economy to build their own societies and to build a more just world. Uh, for sustainable economic growth to flourish and benefit the poorest of the poor, each person must be connected to the engines of growth and the government that regulates them. Full connectivity means that a person is able to pursue a broad range of economic opportunities and have access to the infrastructure, the social services, and, and government institutions that are an essential part of any social compact or development success. They need access to legal identity, uh, modern and effective land tenure and titles, decent jobs in the formal economy, a transparent government that will provide them with quality education and health systems, resilient programs and social safety nets, and effective infrastructure systems, including modern energy, transportation, telecommunications, and financial services. Those are big goals, but I think if we focus attention on that, uh, they need to be developed through national programming, national priorities, and national plans. Uh, but the, uh, the international system has a, an important role in creating those priorities and uh, creating the financing mechanisms that can get uh, uh, sustainable and long-term uh, uh, investment uh, in those sectors. So sustainable economic growth is not simply about increasing the size of national economies, but also shaping enduring systems that respect the rights of individuals and give them the tools they need to help lift themselves out of poverty now and as a permanent condition. The post-2015 agenda offers, I think, an important opportunity to move beyond simply talking about the importance of growth, uh, decent jobs, and reduced inequality, and to start putting in place the practical measures and mechanisms that make such advancements possible. Uh, as with all parts of the post-2015 agenda, the economic portion of our work is deeply interconnected with our efforts in other areas. We'll not achieve our economic growth aim if we fall short in education, in public health, uh, the environment, or in pro promoting peace and security, as I mentioned. We have to identify and address those challenges that sit most centrally in the web of social and economic development. We need to develop dynamic public-private partnerships. We need to unleash the power of innovative technology. We need to recognize that poverty reduction and environmental sustainability go hand in hand. That may sound like a lot, but I know this is an audience that is tailor-made for that challenge. It'll take, I think, your passion, your advocacy, your creativity and innovation uh, that make this a reality. I, I, I really want to, again, thank you for coming here for this weekend, for the work that you're doing in your own communities, for the continuous support that you give to this agenda. Uh, there are a lot of people who are counting on you to be successful. This is a tough uh, political environment right now, but uh, I think that, uh, and you'll probably learn that tomorrow when you get up to the, get up to the hill, but I think that, uh, quite frankly, you're the light uh, that shines through the darkness, and you need to make that case in your home communities on Capitol Hill, across the country, across the world, and I think if we do that, uh, we can get the job done. And there are literally billions of people counting on us. So uh, it's an awesome responsibility, and I just, again, want to thank you for, uh, for the effort and the time and the commitment uh, that you express by being here uh, and being members of one. So thank you. And I'll take that. One of the things that has been different about the development of this agenda uh, is the uh, uh, deep web of uh, input that we have and the organizing that's gone around and around the MDGs. Uh, the one thing I would say, uh, sort of coming from the uh, US perspective, is that if you go to Europe, if you go to Africa, if you go to Asia, if you go to Indonesia, you see billboards about how the countries are doing on the, on the MDGs. If you come to America and you say the MDGs, most people say, what's that? Uh, 
core development goals, what's that? Uh, 2015, what's that? Ending extreme poverty, you're kidding me? Uh, so I think that we have a big job to do here. Uh, I noted the President's statement, uh, which I thought was really uh, important and powerful, but we have a big job to do here <clears throat> to increase uh, the, both the ambition, but also the sense that this, there's, there's a practical reality to this, that with the right, uh, with, if, you, if you shape post governments uh, uh, platforms properly, if you provide the right kind of assistance, if you enable uh, more financing to, to, uh, uh, to move uh, particularly uh, into the least developed countries, great things can happen. You can have both strong uh, uh, national economic growth, but you can tie that to programs that are producing results uh, for all the people uh, in those countries. And again, uh, a good deal now uh, of uh, where, if you, if you begin to look at where extremely poor people live, it's not only in the least developed countries. There's a lot of, the, about half live in middle income countries. Uh, and so I think we need to both uh, create the analytic tools to say what is, gonna, what is it going to take to create more, uh, uh, more systems that are going to try to reach to a universal level. So when you say middle income, is that like Brazil? Uh, it's like India. India. Uh, okay. uh, you know, in particular, uh, if you look at, if you look at uh, uh, where you see high concentrations of very poor people who are uh, who have high levels of stunting, who uh, have high levels of uh, lack access to uh, sanitation, places like that. Um, but Latin America, South, you know, uh, as well. Um, and quite frankly, we've got we have some work to do here to reach uh, very poor people in the U.S. Uh, when do you expect your power to report? Uh, the, the, the goal and the deadline that the Secretary General uh, uh, set before us is by the end of May. So uh, I think what this panel's report will do really is it's kind of a starting point of a, of a bigger UN process. I mentioned that uh, UNDP is doing this uh, 100, 100 country uh, consultation, asking those countries, what do you want, what do you need, what's your strategy, how do you deepen uh, development, how do you reach your core of citizens. Uh, that's, all, that's ongoing. It started last fall and that's ongoing now. But I think, hopefully if we do our job right, we'll have a powerful statement and set of, of, of uh, uh, key goals and indicators that, we, that really begin the process of trying to develop what has to be a country-owned process that the, both the, the member states of the United Nations, the United Nations itself, the rest of the international community uh, uh, grab, uh, consolidate around, and that's a process that goes between now and 2015. I mentioned the acceleration. I think one of the other things that is going on, in, uh, I know it's going on in our government, I think it's, it's, it's happening globally, is that because the, the MDGs had that 2015 outlook, there's still a lot to do in this last couple of years. And there's actually a lot of program and money that was oriented towards kind of trying to get uh, uh, some more progress on, on things. You know, we've fallen short, for example, on uh, maternal mortality and child uh, so, some emphasis about how to accelerate that, improve upon that, and lay the foundation for what happens after 2015 is also a very important part of the conversation. And hopefully, uh, our panel will also facilitate more, more oomph, really, in the last couple of years. Uh, we have a new president of the World Bank, uh, uh, Jim Kim, who's really quite focused on this, I think, doing uh, you know, trying to reorient the bank to 
to uh, not just do good projects, but to really focus on uh, the, the question of, of empowering the body and building strong societies that way. So, I mean, again, there's a lot of work to do. Hopefully, this will be a, a, a powerful start to what is then a couple year long process. So, I, I think the global community is going to have to stay engaged throughout that UN process. Can you talk a little bit about how the SDGs are playing a role in these new discussions? Um, this has been a source of great, you know, discussion, and particularly in our group. Um, and how the MDGs and our panel fit into this effort uh, to create more sustainability globally. And I, I, I would say that I think there's very strong consensus amongst our panel that there needs to be a single set of development goals. There has to be a strong emphasis and at the heart, the emphasis has to be on ending extreme poverty. But it has to be done in a way that's sustainable, that's sustainable environmentally and socially. So uh, we're trying to, I, I describe it, uh, you know, the secretary doesn't describe it this way, not all our panel members describe it this way, is that the, uh, that focus hat on any extreme poverty has to be the core of what we're doing, but it has to be nested in a context in which you're creating mechanisms for sustainability. Obviously, the, uh, one of the uh, things that, that is uh, getting attention and analysis is how do you build systems that are uh, resilient, resilient to uh, climate impacts, resilient to environmental degradation, resilient to lack of access to water, uh, and the, uh, uh, the, uh, there are things I think that will be uh, included in our agenda, likely to be included, not just included, that uh, go to that. Uh, we'll likely to incorporate uh, at least the thinking of the UN Sustainable Energy for All initiative. Uh, we, I think there's strong consensus uh, to, uh, uh, both strong consensus globally and we've got a panel to end fossil fuel subsidies and to try to move those uh, uh, monies, which are very, very substantial, uh, into direct support for poor people. Uh, rather, than the, rather than the current system, which tends to both encourage waste and most of the money is actually flowing uh, up the income scale rather than down. So I think there are things that the uh, that can be done at, at the national level in the developed world and the, and the high income countries, countries that will have direct impact uh, on the uh, on the on the development agenda for the poorest people. Um, I think the open working group process is is likely, uh, and when I say nested inside, I think the open working group process is likely to focus more of its attention uh, on the broader questions around particularly climate sustainability. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm just making, they're just getting started. 